So thank you very much uh, for hosting this great event. I'm very excited to talk to you about our work. Uh, most of this data is, comes from a, a publication from earlier this uh, year, or last year in, in the summer. I can't talk about all of the data, but I'll try to hit the highlights uh, because it is a short talk, but I'm happy to talk to you more after the presentation. Uh, one second. So basically, I'm uh, interested in studying the enteric nervous system, and uh, this is a schematic of the mammalian intestine. And as you can see, there at the top layer is the mucosa, uh, and uh, it, cons it consists mostly of epithelial cells and the lamina propria. Beneath that, you have the submucosa and the muscularis, and within those layers, you have clusters of uh, neurons and uh, uh, glia that are organized in ganglia, and they make up a few different plexi. In the zebrafish, however, it's much simpler, and um, the neurons are oftentimes just individual. There's only one layer, and it's uh, controversial as to whether or not they even have glia. Uh, furthermore, the, the intestine is smaller, so you can really uh, get a, a good grasp of all uh, that's there, and it's so it's much more tractable when you're doing these sorts of lineage tracing experiments, etc. Uh, so the original uh, uh, understanding of the enteric nervous system development was that it was derived from the vagal neural crest alone with uh, uh, delamination from the, uh, from the neural tube and uh, uh, migration into the uh, intestinal tract with migration rostrocaudally uh, to colonize the entire t uh, intestine. And this jived well with our, our understanding of uh, some diseases such as Hirschsprung's disease where it's thought that a defective migration of the vagal neural crest leads to colonic, colonic agangliosis. However, uh, as we've learned more about ENS development, uh, other sources of enteric neurons have been identified, including things, uh, sources such as the sacral neural crest. But there's also a population of cells called the Schwann cell precursors, which may be not the best named uh, cell population. You could also think of them as neural crest stem cells. And essentially, the idea here is uh, you have uh, these cells act in many ways as a depot of neural crest cells that hang out on peripheral nerves and can be redeployed at later stages in development or even in uh, adulthood uh, and give rise to many of the derivatives that are the original neural crest give rise to as well. They play a role oftentimes in uh, regeneration and injury repair. And so in our lab, one of my colleagues uh, found that in uh, the lamprey, uh, basically uh, all of the enteric neurons arise from uh, uh, an analogous population that comes from the trunk neural crest and migrates along peripheral nerves to give rise to enteric neurons. And in the Enomoto lab, they found uh, uh, Schwann cell precursors contributing to uh, uh, the enteric nervous system. And so uh, just the big picture here is that uh, while the lamprey might uh, have initially populated the gut with uh, uh, neurons derived from Schwann cell precursors, in later in, the, uh, in evolution, it appears that you have a dual source. And you know how this works and, uh, and uh, where these cells first popped up in evolution is still uh, uh, not very clear. Um, and then why would I uh, be very interested in this as a, as a physician as well as a scientist? is that there are several, several diseases from, you know, every, every part of the GI tract that can be attributed to enteric neuropathies. And uh, uh, identifying a source of potential enteric neurogenesis could really you know, revolutionize how we manage these diseases. Um, and so I, uh, I work with the zebrafish model in Marion Bronner's lab, and this is an example of one. But the main point is things happen a lot more quickly than in mice and in humans. And by 72 hours, the colonization uh, from the vagal neural crest is complete of the gut. And by five days, they're eating and have peristalsis, et cetera. There's uh, external, uh, external fertilization and, uh, and the embryos are translucent and they're amenable to a lot of powerful transgenic tools. So you can do some really amazing live imaging uh, of, uh, of this model. So just a quick anatomy orientation. This is like a four day old uh, uh, zebrafish. Um, most of my uh, images are in this orientation. 
and they're zoomed in. And uh, this is the, the hindgut, and uh, you can just use the anus as your North Star to help orient you. Um, so my first question is, are the resident neuronal progenitors in the post-embryonic uh, zebrafish intestine? And my main focus was uh, in, the peer, in the immediate post-embryonic stage. And so SOX-10 uh, labels both uh, 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 neural crest as well as uh, glia as a canonical marker. And at two days, you can see SOX-10. Uh, here in the cross section, you can see two chains of it in the uh, foregut, midgut region. Uh, but you don't see PLP-1, which is a glial marker. And in the more uh, proximal region of the gut, you begin seeing some faint FOX2B. Um, but then oh, at the end of the colonization of the vagal crest, uh, this is the hindgut, and we can see uh, the FOX2B in the hindgut. But we don't see a glial marker PLP1A. And I don't see SOX10 at this stage. Um, I, this, this is actually not in the paper, but I've also started uh, using something called hybridization chain reaction, which is uh, an in situ type of uh, mRNA based assay, which is fluorescent uh, in its readout. And again, I see FOX2B, but I don't see uh, a glial marker such as S100 at this stage or PLP1, for example. And there are several other assays. Uh, I don't have time to get into them, but it, um, need, uh, suffice to say, I didn't have convincing evidence of canonical markers of glia or uh, uh, progenitor cell, neuronal progenitor cells at this stage. And so this is a transgenic line, and this is live imaging. Uh, and then in the red is SOX10, and this is actually more of the foregut, midgut region of a two-day uh, uh, post-fertilization fish. And we can see a nice migrating chain of uh, SOX10, and in the green, we begin seeing some FOX2B differentiating neurons uh, in a more proximal region. And, uh, but at three and a half days, we don't see SOX10. Uh, these cells are actually uh, melanocytes, which are also SOX10 positive. Uh, and by five days, we have a very nice plexus with the melanocytes above it, but no uh, clear evidence for, uh, for me of uh, SOX10 cells at that stage in the gut. So to answer my question, it doesn't appear that there are uh, canonical glial markers at this stage, uh, given the uh, absence of SOX10 and other glial markers. Uh, and so it doesn't appear that there are resident precursors at this stage. Uh, so despite not having those uh, putative uh, precursors at that stage, does neurogenesis occur in this time period? So uh, I, I mentioned earlier we had a fox to be kaida line, and so kaida, I believe, is Japanese for maple because it's uh, uh, at baseline it's green, but it can be converted uh, to red, um, much like a maple leaf. And so this is the zebrafish live imaging pre-photo conversion. Uh, and as you can see in the red uh, filter, we have expected autofluorescence of the yolk and uh, some intraluminal mucus, but essentially, uh, you know, all the neurons are green. Um, and after photoconversion, all those neurons that were green are now red. There's still some residual green, but the main point is that any neuron that was there uh, is now marked with red. Um, the point of this experiment was I was effectively trying to timestamp whatever neurons were present. And then I would re-image them at a later time to see if there were any non-converted neurons there, meaning green-only neurons, which would suggest that they newly arose. And that appeared to be the case. And I'll just skip straight to the photo, I mean, to the time lapse. And if you keep your eye in this region, you'll see a, a new neuron arising. Uh, it's going to be green-only. It'll be first be faint, and it'll grow in intensity. It'll start making contact with its neighbors, et cetera. There it is. And so that, for me, suggested that this neuron was being born before our eyes. And so that was normal development, uh, neurogenesis in the gut in the course of normal development. But does this also occur uh, in response to injury? And so using a two-photon laser, uh, I was able to ablate uh, individual neurons with pretty good specificity and accuracy. And after ablating them, you can see like a, a small crater uh, and it's basically totally obliterated. And I, uh, following the ablation, I would do the photo conversion as uh, per the previous experiment and look for any uh, green only neurons. And if they had no red, that would suggest to me that these were newly arisen. 
And I again performed a time lapse. Uh, but in this experiment, I didn't fully uh, ablate. I just gave the neurons a uh, mortal injury per se. And so you can see in the blue, this neuron has a nice big hole through it. And over time, it's going to involute as it dies. And the new neuron will first uh, appear faintly and then grow in intensity and take its place. So you can see, barely probably see a couple pixels. And as time goes by, you've got a new neuron. So does enteric neurogenesis persist in the post-embryonic phase? Yes, it does appear to, to be so in the course of normal development as well as after injury. So if, uh, if uh, you don't have resident precursors in the gut at this stage, talking like in the three and a half to like five to six day period, where are they coming from? And so uh, I did a couple of lineage tracing experiments. The first one's a little more old school in which I used a lipophilic dye and injected into through the still patent anterior neuropore. And uh, doing so resulted in uh, the, the neural tube lumen being filled with the dye. I did this uh, at a time point after which the vagal crest had already already delaminated uh, with the idea, idea being that I wanted to track trunk neural crest and, and later. And then I uh, re-imaged these fish uh, at day six. And so uh, these are just some examples. This is through the mid-gut. You can see this is the, the, the intestine here. And you see uh, FOX2B Kaida labeled cells that are also co-localized with the uh, with the dye that was injected into the neural tube. And here's another example, uh, more towards the hindgut, uh, another uh, dual labeled cell. And you know many of our uh, uh, injected fish had these cells. Uh, it wasn't in one specific region. We'd find them foregut, midgut, hindgut without any specific uh, statistical uh, uh, concentration. Um, it's always good to try to show things in more than one way. So that we also took advantage of um, genetic tracing with an inducible Cree line. Um, and this line was uh, acquired from uh, Longera. Um, and these are just some examples. This top image is uh, when the induction occurs very early. So it catches the vagal crest. And you get a lot of neurons in the hindgut, for example. And here's peripheral uh, uh, projections being labeled. This is uh, my own induction at like 30 hours. And you can see uh, a lot of uh, cells being labeled as, with this as well. Uh, but the strategy for this experiment was to actually do the induction at three and a half days when there was no sub uh, Yes, am I worried well, time? Sorry, yeah, could you, could you wrap up uh, time, time? Okay, yeah, so briefly, we, uh, we found dual labeled cells uh, that were SOX10 Cree positive and uh, positive for QCD indicating that they we're probably coming from ex external to the gut. So that's basically it for me. Sorry I went over time. Um, but I appreciate uh, the opportunity to present the research and happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Well, that, that was brilliant. So let me start with a, a question. Uh, is, have you looked at the subtypes of neurons that are produced uh, in the uh, postnatally, and, and is there the same range or same diversity of neurons produced as during the embryogenesis? So I have not, neurogenesis? Yeah, I have not. Um, good. Uh, that's a follow on experiment that I'm hoping to do, especially uh, as we develop uh, other transgenic lines to help trace these cells a little uh, more specifically. The Sox and Cree is kind of patchy, so it's hard to get a large number of cells to do those sorts of analyses. Uh, but uh, I do believe in the Enomoto paper in mice uh, that they found a higher uh, uh, fraction of those cells were more of the uh, intrinsic primary afferent neurons, more like the sensory subtype. Thank you. Uh, Zachary Olmsted has a question. Uh, about, uh, he asked, uh, have you in, uh, investigated additional origins uh, for uh, enteric neurons, including endoderm and mesoderm-derived neurons that were recently suggested in murine models? 
and also to increase with age. Yes, so, yeah. so, so this is a very controversial area. There's a lot of alternative um, theories about uh, where neurons can come from. And ultimately, I think it's possible that there could be, uh, there, these are not mutually exclusive necessarily. Uh, I do think, you know, uh, all of the more recent studies, uh, uh, we all need to do validations and, you know, compare our, our different results. Uh, there could be, um, but yeah, I think there could be a, a, um, multiple ways of getting new neurons into the gut. So I wouldn't discount that. Okay. And uh, maybe a last question from Aidan Martens. Uh, do you know which signals induce enteric neurogenesis following injury? So I, you know, I'm not, uh, I don't know if there's a, a clear answer for that. I think that's an area for, ripe for more research. Uh, you know, for one example though, uh, is in that paper, we actually looked at um, a uh, 5-H24 receptor agonist. Uh, it's called uh, prucalopride. And uh, those, that class of drug has been implicated for many years in enteric neurogenesis, but it's a complete mystery, you know, in my, from my understanding as to uh, how, the, how that uh, agonism is working, whether it's working at the level of the intestine or at the level of the Schwann cell precursors or somewhere else. So I think, again, like this is a very early uh, stage of research and those are really um, fundamental questions that still need to be investigated.